Hi Blender fans and welcome to Blender TC. For the second tutorial we'll be making the hammer shaft. Please join me, let's begin. Please leave a comment and subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell. Hi, welcome back Blender fans. Tutorial, we did the actual head of the hammer. Uh, in this one we're going to actually do the shaft of the hammer so please join me in the next exciting episode which is making the shaft of this hammer. So. So let me hide that box there. So if I press the end key, sorry, end key, that hides that. And what we're going to do is we're actually concentrating on the shaft of the hammer now. So I don't really need the head. So I'm just going to hide the head. So if I press H, that hides the head. What it does is it puts this little eye and it shuts the little eye. If we hit the little eye, eye the eye reappear. Or you can press Alt and H, which unhides everything that's hidden. Anyway, there we go. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is this shaft. Like I said, I created this uh, photo myself. Uh, just, it's my hammer in my shed. The beauty about actually doing this is that you've got a, an instant reference. You can go, if you if you need to get a bit more detail or how to model it, you can go out to your shed, pick up your hammer, and that, hold it in your hand and have a good look at it. Makes for a good reference and you know when it's done correct because it looks like the hammer that's in your hand. For this shaft we're actually going to use something that looks like it. The shaft itself shaped like a, a cylinder so I'm going to actually just load a cylinder but it's got it's like a flattened cylinder so I'm just going to scale that in the x direction. So it's more or less the shape of the actual profile of the actual shaft. And then I'm going to just move it into the scale it down so it's about the size of the reference. If I press the full stop key, I can just G. And I'm just going to move it about central so it's over the actual picture because when the shaft reappears, uh, when we want his head to reappear, we can make it reappear. Let me just hide that again. And what we're going to do is go more or less the right way, more or less the right size. I'll just scale it down slightly. And then what I'm going to do is rotate that. In fact, I'm going to scale it slightly on the x direction and rotate that by y. And then press 90, which puts it on its side. Now I've done that, what I'm going to do is Control and A. As you can see, you've got all transforms, rotation and scale. So I'm just going to hit all transforms, and that all that does is reset the actual angle. So if we look at angles, everything's set to zero again. If I undo that, you'll see it. So rotate 90 degrees. So Control Z, rotate Y90. As you can see, it's, it's at 90 by just pressing the Control and A, and we fix rotation and scale. That just zeroes everything, which makes things work a lot better. Right. So now, this is simplicity itself. All we're going to do is grab the face, E to extrude, and we're just going to scale it down on the actual profile so it just goes where the actual green vanishes so there we go and this will get the shape of the hammer so E Y I'm sorry X and just scale it down slightly the amount that you actually extrude it is entirely up to you depending on your hammer as you can see I'm just going to move that central so G and Y, Z, Z, G, and Y to move it central. And scale it up slightly so it just. And same with this one. If we actually go on edge select and select that edge with the Alt key, I'm sorry, select the wrong edge there. G, G, or G, and X, or G and Y, sorry, along the green line. Just doesn't help that I've actually changed perspectives. Yeah, but I've done that by holding down my mouse button, and you can just turn it to any way you wish. 
need to extrude. Let's just look from the top because I find it's quite a bit easier to do. So, E to extrude, E, right, along the X, scale, and then just move it, E to extrude. Just do it to the end of this because I might actually do these actual shapes on there because that look quite good. So if I rotate this so it follows that line, and then I scale it in the y direction, I should now be able to E. As you can see, that's actually changed it over there. So if I extruded that now, that it does that, so Control Z. I'm going to extrude E in the X direction and just follow it down E, X, E, X, E, X, E, X. I'm not copying this exactly because it's you could do if you wish to, but. The X, and I'm just getting that kind of look about it. So, E, X, E, X, E, X, E, X, E, X. What I'm going to do is a we're going to E, X, go into these loop cuts and E, X, and alter all these round later on. E, X, E, X, E, X, E, X. As you can see, you can't see through the actual GG. Right, so I'll do that right then. E, X, just for the last one. What I'm going to do is actually select these edges by selecting that there. In fact, the last one didn't work. That one didn't work. So what I'm going to do is actually select that face again. E and X is to there, and E and X right to the end. Is about there, up from the top, rotate it, and now we can actually start making this hammer the, the correct shape. So, looking from the top, we just need to follow, select these edges, press the Alt key, and G and Y. And scale it. I'm just making the just following the actual part of the armor so but because we're only scaling in the y direction we're keeping the general shape GY and I'm just gonna match it up with that and just this is a bit fiddly GY make it about central scale it up Scale just in the Y direction, scale and Y. That's why I said it's quite important just to actually follow the scaling scale by the direction you just want it to scale into because you don't want it to scale in all directions because it just wouldn't look right. Yeah. Press the OK, scale, scale in the Y. That's because we're too close. G and Y, just to move it up. See what I'm doing is actually following that edge up there and it follows it quite well up there but it also gives it quite a bit of realism because if you're actually doing the army yourself GY the thing is anything that's been used for a while 
Let's get online. It's just not uniform. So if something's not uniform, it looks more and more natural. So I just have to bear with me while I'm doing this. As you can see, these little ridges and everything. It's from the hammer being used for years. Yeah. Hang on, you can follow the top, you follow the bottom. If you went into wireframe, it just makes it a little bit easier to see the actual loops. You know, because you can see both edges, and you can see that one's not quite lined up. So if I went to there, select that edge, looking from the top, GY. Just move it up slightly and scale it down. You can follow the edge completely. It's entirely up to you how you do this. GY. I tend to actually get it so it's roughly equidistance GY on both sides and then just follow it so. G Y, and because it gives it, it's a little bit imperfect. That's what makes it look real. Yeah. Admittedly, if you wanted, you could actually do this as just one big long cylinder, and we couple of, and just paint this side black and thing. But I'm just adding a little bit of detail here, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And I think that was in the wrong place, so I'm going to press the Alt key and then press GG and then move it down to put it in the right place. Same as that one, that looks like it's in the wrong place. GG, move it down, and it looks like I missed one there, so what I need to do is select that face, put in another loop cut. Control R, and that puts that one back, puts that one in. Same with this one. Control R, rotate it in the Z direction. Press GG, and move it over there. And same with the last one. So, one more loop cut. Rotate in the Z direction. GG and then scale it in the Y direction and I'm just going to scale, quickly scale these down in the Y direction scale Y scale Y scale Y GY, just to move it up slightly, and same with this one. GY, GY, and if we're going to solid mode, let's just have a look at that. As you can see, it's now a rough hammer. And and scale that G Y and E to extrude and we'll scale that down and there we have it. We've got the hammer so far and now we just got to go to the other end. E X and then scale it up slightly and then E and X and scale it down because that's the shape it goes give it so the yellow just appears and then I'm just gonna E and Y sorry Z control Z actually I'm doing it E and X sorry Select that face again for some reason it deselected. So 
E and X and rotate it slightly and scale it down a little bit G and X and then roughly we've got a summer if I press Alt and H We've now got click off there. I'll just hide this, hide that. See, very quickly we've got our hammer. I'm just going to select the handle, smooth shade it, shade smooth, and of course rename that cylinder as handle. Now I've got the handle and the hammer head. And just to add a bit more detail, I'm just going to Alt H. Sorry, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go out of edit mode. I'm going to make that reappear, put it into wireframe. And this will, if I actually hit this key here, that enables me to actually select both faces on either side. But you can add more and more detail. It's in Highly up to you. You know you can actually say to make this say simple. I'll just grab that edge there. That grab that edge because that follows one of the actual shapes. Oh, that edge. And then extrude slightly. So extrude along normals and you can make that so it's got a little ridge there if you wish. And if you just go into that one, as you can see we've got a little ridge there. I'm not going to do that this time because it means a very long tutorial to actually add a lot of things. But what you do is you if you've got the detail there, so say that's your detail. So I'm going to just go into the face select, just make it easier. All right, you can see that's where the detail is. So if I go into face select there, and that's where to select them. Extrude along normal. And as you can see, we've now got the actual ridge of the armor. And then we add the modifier subdivide surface. And we've got the ridge, one of the ridges of the armor. GC, just make it less pronounced. And as you can see, we could add them all the way down. And we've got the handle of the hammer. In fact, just give me a minute, I'm just going to do that myself, so now I've explained it once, what I'll do is maybe put this into time lapse and show can see what I'm doing is I'm selecting these and I'm just going to select them all together now all I'm doing is just to make it quicker I press the actual select the first one with shift select the last one with control as you can see, this is making it a lot quicker. I'll just move this over here so I can just show you. So, shift to actually select. And press control. And shift. Control. Shift. Control. 
So that's one side done. And then if I look from the bottom, pressing the 7 key, Control and 7, and now looking from the base, do the same, Shift, and press Control, Shift, and Control, Shift, and Control, Shift, and Control. Selecting either edge, you see. Shift and then control. All I'm doing here is adding some detail to make it look a bit better. And what I'm going to do now is extrude along the normals and just fetch it out slightly. As you can see, I've now got ridges on both sides of my hammer. I think that's the handle about done. Yeah, quite simple. That's the handle about done. Right, please join me in the next tutorial. In the next tutorial, what we'll be doing is we will be adding the texture to this uh, model of the hammer so join me then as you can see nice little rough hammer quite good that quite pleased with that we just need to add the texture and welcome to Blender DC. For the third and final tutorial of the Hammer series, we will be texturing the hammer. Let's begin. Please leave a comment and subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell.